The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, we're continuing our Ableton basics and taking a closer look at the stock plugins, amp, pedal, and cabinet. And the reason I group these together is because these are really a organic processing trifecta. So I'm going to start out here with the guitar. And I'm going to just drop amp, cabinet, pedal. Traditionally, you would put the pedal going into the amp and then the amp going into the cabinet. So let's just start out the old fashioned way and see what we get. Hey. And I'm just going to go through and turn these off one at a time. So you could start out by hearing what each one is doing. Let's try to turn it off. Now you could hear with any one of these three plugins turned off, the guitar tone is not very convincing. Each one of them comes with a few options of flavor. I find the default settings in almost every Ableton plugin to be the sauce, but let's take a listen to distortion. All three of these plugins have their own wet dry knobs, so if you don't want to completely use it, here in pedal you also get an input gain control. By default, this plugin has a roll off because guitars tend to have a lot of unwanted low frequencies in the signal. But if you do want that low frequency in there, for example, if you were processing the something that wasn't a guitar or you just wanted the more full sound, you can enable the sub frequency again. Maybe for the intro of the song, I would keep the full thing in there. And then once the actual sub 808 came in this beat, I would automate this off. Another absolute gem feature here inside of pedal, if you right click on it, you can enable this option high quality. And it actually does sound a little bit more high quality. I'm guessing that enables oversampling, but let's move on to our amp now that we've dialed in a tone that we like with our pedal. Let's start out with the clean one. And we'll just go up the line. And just like the distortions, they tend to get really loud as you go. I must say blues is my favorite out of all of these. actually find bass to be a pretty nice one. If you want to soften your guitar, but if you want a bright, shiny guitar, you're probably going to want to use blues. Again, a lot of the times the Ableton default presets are just the sauce. That's probably why they put them there. And also, these guitars are actually being pan randomized, so I'm going to enable stereo. I'm also going to enable stereo here on my cabinet. Moving on to our cabinet plugin. 
Now this tiny little plugin is a really important sound design tool for making things that sound really digital or dry have a sense of space and not a sense of space like reverb and room, but more like the sound is taking place inside a box. And that's why it's called cabinet. It's as if you were playing that sound out of a speaker and putting a mic in front of that speaker and recording that mic back into your mix. <laughs> As you can see, without the cabinet enabled, the signal sounds really aggressive, but with cabinet, you have the option of a few different speakers, like two 12-inch speakers. Here in our microphone list, we have different microphone positionings. Near on axis, which means you just point the mic straight at the speaker as close to the speaker as possible. Near off axis is maybe you rotate that mic 45 degrees to have it more pointing at an angle. Seems to be getting more of the cabinet tone and less of the direct speaker sound and then far. I would probably use condenser microphones because they tend to be more sensitive. But with guitars, you're usually going for a muddier sound. So I might actually choose near and dynamic mic for this sound. Kind of smooths out a lot of the harshness that you get from the digital distortions. So just as a sound design preference, I'm going for near on axis. And obviously before we switched output to dual because we're running stereo signal into it. And you have your dry wet knob. Are your vocals sounding a little weak sauce? Does your plug-in chain lack organic spice and quality? Introducing Waves Vocal Sauce, the ultimate preset for Waves plugins that'll get your vocals so saucy you may never use another plug-in chain again. Waves Vocal Sauce is available now only at Holoops.com. Now that we have our guitar chain set up, we can group these into an audio effect rack using the keyboard shortcut Command G. And if you want to see my complete beginner basics tutorial all about every feature inside of audio effect racks, I have a link to that in the description. So we can copy this audio effect rack. We don't actually need to open it up and do anything inside of it. We're just going to use it as a little house to easily copy and paste three plugins at a time. And let's see what we can do by dropping this on our vocal sample here on the channel below it. Now the settings from our guitar may not be the correct settings for this voice. So let's go in and see if we can customize this little setup to sound a little bit better on this voice. Because without any effects on it, it just sounds like a little bit of a dry and unpleasant voice. So we're gonna soften this up and turn it into a nice background element and give it a little bit of warmth and power. Cause that's what Ableton's pedal amp and cabinet are really the trifecta for. This little slider between your mids gets you different frequency ranges as to where your mids are. So you could have low mids, high mids, or I guess somewhere right in the center mids. Let's mute the guitar so you can hear that better. I think since these are already kind of bright, I might go for that one. You can sneak some of the treble back up. That really took the edge off. I wasn't a fan of the breath it stuck out too much and this really helped smooth that out in a nice way without actually making it feel quieter. Let's check out our amp on here.
And now that we've smoothed off that high end, we can grab the presence and treble here on our amp and kind of bring those back off so it doesn't feel like it got dulled down by the overdrive pedal. <laughs> Clean is definitely my favorite on this. Making a huge, huge difference. Let's try this without either of these. Now let's move on to our cabinet. I'm thinking I might want a smaller cabinet on this voice. Let's check it out with the mix with the guitar. I think I want to switch this to condenser and do far. Now let's start maybe reintroducing a little bit of the clean signal somewhere here. Here in the pedal, I kind of want some of the old back, but not all of it, maybe just half of it. Do half here too. And I'm going to keep it 100% on the cabinet because that's really the finishing touch, taking this sound and helping it feel a little bit more natural. The next little trick that amps, pedals, and cabinets are amazing for is saucing up other effects. Now this is a little bit more of an advanced trick, but let's say that we wanted to put a reverb on this vocal. Let's just drop our reverb here after our chain, blows this chain down, and let's create a new chain beside our amp. So we've got our amplified signal now going into our reverb. <laughs> Now that sounds cool, but we could actually make a way more advanced sounding reverb that fills an even deeper part of the spectrum than the dry signal is just by adding an amp before the reverb. So let's go up to the top, drop this before here, and now we're gonna Command G, and we're gonna go to our chains and create a dry chain. Rename it so we know which one's which. And we now have an amp here saucing up our reverbs. I'm going to switch this to dual to keep it stereo, and I'm going to actually switch this to bass. Hey. Now we're using the amp really as a filter because what we're doing is adding amplification to these areas of the signal by applying distortion to it. And that's why the amp cabinet and pedals are such unique distortion tools because one, they're so simple to use and two, they just hit you right in the feels because guitar amplification is really one of the most primitive forms of signal processing and effects just in the history of music effects. So it's nice to add something old and familiar to your new explorations here in Ableton. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found all the tips and tricks in this tutorial useful. And if you want to see the rest of my Ableton Basics series, you could check out the description of any one of these videos to see the complete list of Ableton stock plugins as tutorials. So I'll catch you guys next time with another video. Peace out.